Hey everybody, it's McKenna Dahlmeyer here with campusreform.org. We are joined by a very special guest today. He has been on the ground reporting on all of the riots and destruction that have been plaguing America's cities lately. His name is Elijah Schaefer, also known as Slightly Offensive on social media, and we're so glad to have him tonight. Elijah, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me on. Of course. So before we get to what you've experienced in America's cities, I wanted to ask you about your most recent cameo in Harvard Kennedy School's Joan Donovan's most recent op-ed titled, How an Overload of Riot Porn is Driving Conflict in the Streets. So first I wanted to ask you how you figured out that you were mentioned in this article, and then can you explain what your initial reaction to the article was? Yeah, so it was an op-ed, right, for, for the Massachusetts Information uh, School, our good old little MIT, mm -hmm. uh, Information Technology. But apparently they've uh, branched off into criticizing and blaming right-wingers for the violence somehow um, and for propagating the unrest in the country. I don't know what kind of world we live in, but an individual shared the article with me, presumably connected to one of the universities because they seem to have the exact article and everything linked. Uh, and they just said, this is really weird, you're in this. And as I went down it and saw that as, they, as Joanne, who is a uh, very, very much the kind of looking person you would expect would write this article. Uh, you know, looks like mm -hmm. any one of your, your fourth grade teachers is what I, was what I mean. Um, she, she, she goes down in her logic and sort of blames myself and another uh, reporter named Andy No for the escalating violence, including the right wing, um, I don't want to call them clapbacks, but I guess mm -hmm. the right wing resistance to the riots. Um, instead of blaming the violence from the right against the left on the initiation of the left, starting the fires, burning down the buildings, rioting and looting. She says it's our reporting on yep. the rioting, the burning and the looting that's actually sowing more civil unrest, which to me is, is absolute madness. Yes, to put it lightly, I'd say. So she even claims you've gone undercover by posing as protesters to capture footage and your videos are, quote, edited, decontextualized, and shared among audiences hungry for a new fix of riot porn. What would you say to this? <laughs> well, uh, you know, this seems like a very lonely woman, and she seems like she lives a very sad life. And you have to live a sad life to come up with such a pathetic excuse uh, for research. And what's really interesting about her is, is they, this is what people do. Uh, her and several other publications um, and propagandists they say that video evidence, because you can't, you can't refute video evidence, right? It's, it's something you're captured. Their excuse is it's, it's selectively edited, uh, decontextualized. And I always ask them, you know, burning down an office supply store in Kenosha, Wisconsin, how do you contextualize or decontextualize that? I don't know if there's any way to justify that um, or to somehow explain that if you can connect the dots that somebody who committed rape uh, and was quite quite a, a generally dysfunctional individual and, and a criminal in a society uh, got into an altercation, resisted arrest, was shot and therefore paralyzed, which I'm not gonna comment on whether that was justified or not. It just did happen and that's the situation. Mm -hmm. It's always unfortunate when people get shot. Uh, but then, you know, leading from that to burning down a private citizen's office supply store, I mean, what, 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 am, what story am I supposed to be telling that would make that make sense? I'm not exactly sure. Yep. Exactly. So I wanted to read a quote from her, an exact quote from her article that maybe explains her line of reasoning a little bit for everybody watching. Um, so she said, since the George Floyd protests, conservative media outlets, including Fox News, particularly Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity, One American News, Glenn Beck, Blaze TV, and right-wing YouTubers have been covering Black Lives Matter and other left-wing protests, specifically highlighting instances of violence, fighting, and property damage. This coverage has come to dominate the right-wing narrative in a new way, flipping the script to suggest that Black protesters demonstrating because they fear police violence are themselves a threat to white people. So with what you know from being on the ground with all this violence taking place, how would you respond to Donovan's claim that you are, quote, flipping the script? Yeah, well, first I want to clarify, people always say Glenn Beck's Blaze TV to try to discredit the program. Glenn Beck, it is, Blaze TV is a separate entity. He started a company called The Blaze. This is a bigger company 
that is a merger between multiple companies. It is not Glenn Beck's Blaze TV. And I, I think it's kind of funny they even use that to discredit uh, us because he's actually a really intelligent person. And that's like saying, oh, Donald Trump's America as if it's a bad thing. But anyway, um, you know, they do this to kind of present the fact that we overemphasize the violence and the looting, et cetera. By they, I happen to be one of the only prominent, I think the only prominent maybe reporter from Blaze TV uh, mm -hmm. doing this at all, if the only one that exists yeah. even here. So when they, when they use phrases like, oh, the Blaze TV is doing this rather than there's this guy who happens to work for this company doing this. Um, you make it makes it seem like a much bigger mission and like conglomerate report mm -hmm. uh, on individuals focusing on the violence. But you have to ask yourself the question. It's not flipping the narrative. I always tell people the right wing, as they want to call it, is 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 actually news and entertainment for people who love America. It's not really like Blaze TV isn't a right wing news. Right. It's not right wing entertainment. In fact, a lot of liberal people watch my content and subscribe and follow to what I do. The reason why they watch is not because I'm flipping the narrative. It's because me and other journalists like uh, Drew Hernandez um, on, you can find him on Twitter, are filling in the gaps for what corporate media isn't showing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not like we're, we're altering the, the narrative to be something obscure or new. We're simply choosing to show parts of the narrative that the media intentionally suppresses and tries to pretend don't exist. So we're completing the narrative, not flipping the script. Exactly, yes. I think that's a very important distinction. Thank you for bringing that up about Blaze TV because I've read that a lot and I think a lot of people don't know what Blaze TV actually is. It's not just Glenn Beck's Blaze TV. Um, yeah, he's a host on the, on the network. Yes. Uh, he co-founded one of the sister companies, but it's like, it's just people always trying to find a way to make people who think differently than the corporate media seem illegitimate. Yeah. And it's, it, I, I'm pretty, pretty darn tired of, I think my America can back me up on that, of uh, being targeted and discredited simply because you think differently than the uh, establishments and the elites. I mean, it's, it's really kind of a pitiful excuse for, for a writer. And I'm, I'm kind of ashamed that she, would, that she would represent institutions like MIT and Harvard. Yep, that's so true. I mean, like at Campus Reform, that pretty much every article that we write is about professors because, you know, they have these high and mighty degrees and everything, and they just think that they know everything. And then if you think differently in the classroom, then they're going to mock you or harass you or dock you points on a test or um, an essay just because you don't agree with them. So it's... They're egotistical nihilists. Yes, yes, that is the term. Um, okay, so next in the article, Donovan mentions, quote, riot porn and how it is mobilizing white militia and vigilante groups to take up arms against Black Lives Matter and Antifa protesters. Is there any truth to this claim with what you've experienced? No, there is not uh, truth to that. The, the fear of the far left of right wing militias goes back as early as the formation of this country. Uh, in a lot of ways, if you if you think of the far left as being authoritarians, a.k.a. Uh, in a lot of ways, the, the queen and the king and, and the royal family of England, which we were subservient to, right, to this royal lineage, we are a colony that goes back for, you know, centuries uh, per se, right? I mean, we're, we're, we're technically British people. Um, and how did we arrive at this point of revolution? It was through the use of, of militias in a lot of ways. And the revolution was fought in a guerrilla mindset. And we overthrew the establishment and the elites. And if you look up even to the French Revolution, I mean, the way that, that elitists and people who do no longer care about listening to the voice of the people are overthrown is usually by well-armed militias, not by rioters and by uh, insurrectionists per se. Those are, they're usually put down very quickly. Um, but a united in, in front of people who are uh, just angry and upset on what's going on with their country is how we started. And what is they continue to try to form this country into something the founders clearly never framed it to be, um, they're afraid that people could rise up again that love this country and take it back from them, uh, them being the, the establishment, uh, some people call them deep state, some people call them globalists, I just call them people without the interest of the general populace in mind, working outside of the democratic means they were elected, or even not even elected, some cases just appointed to, to be placed in. That being said, um, by no means would there be any foundational evidence that recording riots and documenting history is instigating people to uh, take up arms 
against the rule of law. And it doesn't even appear that the militia in these cases are actually fighting against the government, even though they voiced to me that they're okay, they're actually okay with Black Lives Matter and these individuals fighting the police. That's, that's, that's where she's wrong. I mean, these, these militia I've spoken to directly are usually anti-authoritarian and in many ways anti-government. They love the country. They just don't trust the federal government or even the government in general. Right. And so them, you know, marching on police precincts, et cetera, they tend to actually support. But it's the burning down of private property, which is the yeah. country they love, that they're upset about. And to somehow say that filming a riot is what makes people mad holds some truth because obviously if they didn't know about it, they wouldn't be upset which is why the corporate media specifically doesn't show it to not allow the populace to come to their own reasonable conclusions on how they feel about this. But on the other end, it's like, it's not directly because I filmed it before they are going to do any criminal activity. You put the blame on the people committing the initial crime. These are the people destroying their businesses, their towns, their cities, looting their areas. And if you show honestly, as the media should, that these people are committing crimes, then it would make sense that people would be upset and in some cases might retaliate. But it would be actually dishonest and unfair of me to not show the whole picture. And it is dishonest and unfair for the media to purposely suppress this, even if they claim to have good intentions, because their job is to show the truth. And if the truth is inconvenient, then that's not our fault. That's just, that's, that's up to the social scientists to figure out why that's happening, but don't blame the reporters. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, so that kind of segues into I wanted to talk about Kyle Rittenhouse a little bit because I knew you were on the scene of that. Um, so he, for those who don't know, Kyle Rittenhouse was the one who shot three protesters in Kenosha, Wisconsin, when all of those um, writings were happening, happening after Jacob Blake's shooting by police. Um, so Donovan mentions Rittenhouse several times throughout the article, referring to him as a, quote, lone vigilante and calling for Facebook to block searches on his name. So I want to ask you, as an eyewitness to what occurred, what actually happened that night? And was he a lone vigilante? No, yeah, there, there were at least a dozen or more individuals that came uh, armed openly with long rifles to, in their own admittance, to number one, protect protesters from police and the possible altercation of people who would want to be violent. So they came to actually, uh, in a lot of ways, protect protect uh, the BLM rioters and protesters. Number two, they also came to provide medical aid um, for the individuals as a part of that. But ultimately speaking, they were there to protect the private property uh, and they were to do that through nonviolent means. And they had expressed that the guns were there for defensive reasons. And while I'm not a prosecutor or defense in the case, being that I was there, I can say as much that the individual, Joseph Rosenbaum, the initial victim uh, of the alleged homicide uh, via a 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse uh, was using the N-word and agitating militiamen, and actually asking them to kill him earlier in the night. So, uh, I mean, he wasn't a vigilante. Um, he more seemed like an individual who was just there to be a part of things. Remember, the BLM people had guns too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, acting like the militia were the only people with guns, in fact, they were not vigilantes. I think it's interesting that we keep condemning people who mm -hmm. From my understanding and what I saw and have witnessed and therefore studied from the footage, he was defending himself. I know people disagree with that, but I don't think they've really researched this very well. Um, ultimately speaking, when it comes down to this, the blame is always put on the militia. The blame is put on an individual uh, defending himself. It is put upon a business owner wanting his property. Um, they blame business owners for being racist because they say you like your physical property more than you care about black lives. It's false equivalencies all the way and ultimately comes down to blaming reporters. And it's all about a passing the blame, re rejecting responsibility and allowing the unrest to continue. And, and that's, that's been their plan since the beginning and it, it continues to be their plan. And who are they? Well, your campus reform, so I probably can't deep dive as much into that, but if you wanna know who they are, you can watch my show. And we do. Um, yeah, so I mean, no one would know any of this if they just watched mainstream media or looked at Snapchat for their news or Instagram because when all this went down, you know, scrolling through social media, all you see is, you know, condemn Kyle Rittenhouse and then justice for Jacob Blake and all this stuff without this footage. I mean, I don't think that he probably would even have a case. So I'm so glad that y'all were there to get this. Um, I mean, without you and Andy, no, I honestly don't believe America's out. Americans outside these cities would even know what's going on because the mainstream media refuses to report 
what's going on in these Democrat led cities. Um, so I just wanted to thank you for all the work that you do, putting yourself in harm's way to get this out to the public. Um, so why do you think that you're one of the only journalists reporting on this? And a follow up with that would be, why would do people like Donovan attack you for just showing what's actually happening and spreading truth? You know, I think a better word even than a journalist would just be uh, a reporter because I'm, I'm really mm -hmm. not telling a story. And I think that's where they, she gets it wrong. They assume I'm there to tell a story. I've just witnessed a lot of criminal activities and I want to provide context. And what she doesn't realize too is even last night, things remained mostly peaceful. And I show a lot of mostly peaceful things that are interesting that are out there. Um, the things that go the most viral, that have the most virulent properties are clips that obviously showcase things that are breaking news. Uh, but ultimately speaking, I think that I'm not one of the only people, I just have realized that a lot of people don't know how to package and deliver this to people in the same way the corporate media does. So I'm looking at the narrative the corporate media is, is designing. Some people call them the mainstream media. I try to avoid that wording because it gets you flagged online. Anything that, that allows you to expose the, the lies uh, put, makes you a target these days. But uh, with these, these major media conglomerates, I just look for the holes in what they're not saying based off my eyewitness accounts. And I try to fill in the video footage uh, and provide commentary post the fact uh, to help Americans to see a clearer picture. And ultimately that's my goal. Uh, help Americans to see that what's going on is not what they're being presented. That I, even though if it sounds like you've heard a million times, you know, I wanna provide as much evidence as possible until America acknowledges that Black Lives Matter uh, often behaves in very terroristic ways, uh, in agitating ways, in, in ways of unrest that are unlawful. And are not only unbecoming to, to lawful citizens, but don't correlate directly with what their goals um, <coughs> are professed to be, which is to seek peace and to procure the lives of, of, of Black people uh, for longer than I guess they think they, they're going to have as long as police are present. Uh, but yeah, but these people will attack you. They'll come at you. And I think the reason why more people don't do it is because it's a very difficult, it's a very difficult life to put your life on the line, to try to tell the truth and to do a better job I would say than, than very well paid journalists uh, that live very comfortable lives, uh, yet you get mocked for being a propagandist, uh, even though you're telling the truth. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that, that's uh, pretty- Essentially just fabricating lies to the general public. It, it's really kind of disgusting. And I think that's why more people choose their route than this route, because this route doesn't come with the same praise from people. Exactly, yep, hit the nail on the head with that one. Um, so you've been to Chaz or CHOP, whatever they call it these days. Um, you've been to Portland, to Seattle, to Kenosha. Um, could you share with us the most shocking thing that you've experienced this year, if you could name one thing? Yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been covering these things for a few years now, but I think things really escalated in June. Uh, and ultimately, I think watching, watching protests uh, accelerate into riots back during the time of, of of uh, George Floyd um, and seeing him, his death, which is still in dispute right now of exactly what implications really caused that. Uh, some people call it a homicide, other people say he died from a co uh, comorbidity, including ingestion of fentanyl. But I, I'm not gonna conjecture there. I just think that like watching the buildup of some of these riots and unrest uh, when I first moved to Dallas earlier this year and watching people nearly kill one another and rob banks and watch the police uh, retreat and not know what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all like pre-June time and watching the police be unprepared for what they were facing and not know how to control a city like Dallas really kind of shocked me. Um, to see the indiscriminate firing of rubber bullets, pet balls, tear gas canisters, seeing them shoot tear gas canisters into cars accidentally and hitting bystanders in the head, like people mm -hmm. walking by with rubber bullets had nothing to do with the riots and just going, wow, if the police of one of the top major cities in the United States doesn't know what to do in this situation, uh, I fear for the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. And seeing that night a man nearly, I thought he died uh, completely, uh, he was already conscious being hit in the head with the trucks of a skateboard and had his head split open and bleeding on the ground and watching people laugh. Uh, it really shows you the cruelty of individuals and 
I think those are just some of the hard images uh, that you see in your life of watching the fact that these people claim to be fighting for black lives, but in fact, they not only don't value their own life, they clearly don't value the property and the lives of this entire country to a point that I think police are not trained to handle very well. And it's sad to watch the country get to this point where it looks like the military has already had to and probably will increasingly have to get involved. Yep. Yep. Um, okay, so lastly, I just wanted to ask if you could share with us something that your videos might not capture that you wish could be related to your audience, something that you wish more people knew what was going on. I wish Antifa didn't get so much of the blame for what's going on in the country. A lot of these people are Black BLM activists committing the crimes and the vandalism. And I think that it's it's narrative appropriate to blame Antifa since they appear to be mostly white individuals. And this sort of social justice, politically correct culture has infiltrated the right wing as well um, to where people assume even when you say BLM and Antifa as if they're synonymous when they're not. Uh, and we don't call out the black community for a lot of this ratchet behavior and criminal behavior um, that they justify. And we lay blame on people wearing black block, which in many ways are only a small portion of these protests and only commit a partial portion of these crimes. When in fact, a lot of the individuals committing these are Hispanic and black people that are waving uh, you know, black power flags, et cetera. Uh, but we continually just do something that I think we've done for a long time in our culture is just kind of let black people off the hook uh, in terms of these narratives because it's politically incorrect to say that black people are violent or black people are this. Even me saying this now, somebody when watching and listening will think, oh, he's getting into hard territory. But it's not hard territory, mm -hmm. it's what's happening. Um, and it shouldn't be inconvenient to talk about what's actually happening in our country. And it makes me upset that even Donald Trump uh, and people in his circles, you know, still like to lay blame on Antifa without just saying, hey, the black community has a serious problem with crime and they have a serious problem with justifying looting and things. Uh, and people in Congress have a way of letting them off the hook and telling them that they're just looking for some breads. Uh, when in reality, these are people who went to public school, a lot of them are don't uh, clearly don't have probably strong fathers in their lives mm -hmm. and there's broken issues in the black community that are leading them and there are opportunists like antifa which somehow commingle and commit crimes in addition to what they're doing but a lot of the crimes are instigated initiated and a lot of the riots are started from the actions specifically of black people at these riots and nobody talks about that acknowledges that or mentions that and all we do is talk about antifa and i think it, it it's why we're not getting to the root of the problem yeah, I think you're totally on point because Black Lives Matter, um, they're pretty much immune from any kind of um, uh, insult or any kind of criticism because I don't know, I was reading somewhere that they became the most popular thing in America, more popular than the president, more popular than um, any sitting congressman, any celebrity. Um, so they've just totally taken um, the scene for themselves and they are gaining so much popularity because of it and people you know just think that it's just a peaceful organization they just want rights they just want to be equal but all this stuff that's actually going on because nobody wants to blame them as you said um because they're totally immune from this criticism is just setting us on our path for disaster um so i just think this is so important that you're showing this um on social media and everywhere that you can and on your show on the blaze and just wanted to thank you for all of your work and for joining us tonight um this is a joy and i'm so glad that we got to do this awesome i really appreciate you having me on and i love everything campus reform is doing i think you guys are doing a great job at not only exposing teachers but just fighting through the bs of people who are trying to destroy our country in the indoctrination camps you're on the front lines as well because obviously this all begins in the universities there's a lot of talk even last night about you know what they're studying in university. And even this morning, I was at a place where I heard college students talking about being in the protest last night and being in their last semester. And college students are largely responsible um, for a lot of the violence and action that's happening in college graduates and teachers. So you know, I appreciate that and thank you for having me on. Thank you, have a good one. You too.